Okay. Um, we're going to do a problem that's uh, very similar to the last problem that's on the homework for section uh, 6.2. And I just call it the grade problem. And it is, uh, this is kind of the idea of when a professor grades on a curve. Oftentimes students think that grading on a curve is just giving everybody a higher grade. That's not necessarily the case. Um, if you truly grade on a curve, then uh, this is kind of what it means here. So um, let's, we'll go ahead and read it. A particular test, uh, on a particular test, a class scores are normally distributed with a mean of 58 and a standard deviation of 13. The professor decides to grade on a curve where 10% of the students receive an A, 15% are going to receive a B, 50% receive a C, 15% a D, and 10% an F. And then what it wants you to do is give the cutoff scores. And I wrote this like this because that's what uh, your homework looks like. It's actually uh, written out like that and then you got to fill in these boxes with the appropriate numbers. So this is a very, very similar. I have different percentages than the one that your book gave. Um, but the, here's the idea is that, you know, this is a pretty low mean. And if the, stu if the scores are normally distributed, um, and in real life they wouldn't have to be exactly normally distributed for you to grade on a curve, you could still use kind of a normal distribution to determine what the cutoffs are. But the idea here is they're kind of, you know, it's kind of a, a shape like this where if you have this normal distribution and the center, you know, the center score is 58, then, you know, they did kind of, you know, center around that and then the majority scored in the center and as you went higher and higher or lower and lower, there were less and less students. And if so, if it were centered around a different number, then maybe the test was t a little too hard. And what you should do is give the top portion, you know, the A's, the bottom portion, the B's, you know, the middle portion, the C's, and so on. So that's the idea of grading on a curve. Um, so, so here's kind of the idea that this 50% of this 50% get a C. This is like the middle 50%. So let me do what it would be approximately the middle 50%. Maybe, you know, something like this. This 50%. These are the C's, right? And then it says, you know, 50% uh, got a B, 15% get a D. So those are the ones next to those, right? So these would be like this, this 15% these would be the D's for that 15% and this 15% up here these would be the B's and then this 10% here those would be the A's the top 10% right and then this 10% here these would be the F's okay so that's what it means to grade on a curve um, and so uh, what it wants to know is okay the A's you know, the A's are going to be between what two scores? And the B's are between what two scores? The C's, the D's, and the F's, and so on. Okay, so that's the idea. So here's how to solve this. Um, what I'm going to do here, I'm, I'm not going to worry about... Uh, um, well, I, I, can, I can do that. Uh, you have these X score. I'll go ahead and do it kind of like I was doing it before, right? You have these X scores. These are the test scores. Okay, these are the test scores that give you each of these right here. So corresponding to each one of those is a Z score. And... Um, so what I'm going to do is I need to find these z-scores. Now the curve is symmetrical, so I need to just find these two, and these are going to be the positive ones of those. And so, um, so this bottom portion, this is like 10%. So I'm going to look up this. I'm going to look up 1.000. I'll look it up backwards on my table. 
Um, and I see I got 0 0.1003, and that's the closest, and that's negative 1.28. So this is like negative 1.28, and so this is a positive 1.28. Maybe I'll zoom in here a little bit. Okay, so now to get to get this one, I'm not going to look up 15%, right? I got to look up this total distance. So I'm actually going to look up 0 0.2500. Okay, because I got to look up the z score that gives me the bottom 25%. So I'm going to look that up 0 0.2500. And I get um, looks like here's point two five one four and point two point uh, two five one four. That's actually the one that's going to come closest here, and that is negative zero point six. Seven. Okay, so this is negative 0.67. So this is a positive 0.67. Okay, and so now I can use the reverse z score formula. I'm going to use this mean of 58. I could write it down here. And um, a standard deviation of 13. And I won't write them all out here, but I'm going to convert each of these scores back to their z-score. I mean, each of these z-scores back to their x-scores. Okay? Um, I'll use this one here. So the mean is 58, right? So um, 58 for this negative, this is negative 1.28 times 13. And when I do that, I get 41.36. Now the computer is going to tell you to, to, to round these to the nearest um, round these to the nearest whole number. So that would be like 42. Oh no, 41, sorry. That would be 41. 41. Okay, so now let's do this one. Uh, 58 minus 0 0.67 times 13. That's like 49.29. So that's 49. So now this one up here, I just need to change that to a plus. 66.7. So that's 67. And this last one, 58 plus 1.28 times uh, 13. And that is 75. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'll zoom out here now. So now what I want to do, I have these numbers here Oop. and you can think of this as being the number that goes with the A, the B, the C, and the D okay and so here's what you do so A is like uh, the 75 up to a hundred so you're gonna this this first number that you got here you're gonna start by putting 75 in there and then a hundred and now this one, consider this one going with the B, that's a 67, so you're going to put that in there, and then I'm going to go up to 99. So I'm going to go up to, uh, oh, 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 sorry, not 99. <laughs> I'm going to go up to 74. 74, 74. So I'm going to go up to 74. Um, so the the C is like this 49 here is going that's like the bottom cutoff for the C 49 and then I'm gonna go up to 66 so I'm always going up to one less than this okay and then the D would be the 41 
and that's going to go up to 48. Okay, and then the F is going to, of course, be 0, and then it'll go up to 40, like that. So 0 to 40 is the F, and then 41 to 48, the D, 49 to 66 is the C, and 67 to 74 is the B, 75 to 100 is the D. Notice that these are the scores that you got down here, and with F being the zero. So those are the ones that you actually found, and then these upper cutoffs are going to go right below. Well, you, A will start with 100. This will be right below that. This will be below that. This will be below that, and this will be below that. But that's how that one is done. And that's also what it means to grade on a curve. So you don't really want a professor to grade on a curve. At least uh, you don't want to tell them to grade on a curve um, before you take the test. Because let's say everybody does good. Let's say everybody in the class gets an A. Okay, there's a certain mean and standard deviation, right? But only the top 10% of the class will get an A. The bottom 10% of the class would get an F right even though everybody scored an A so grading on a curve is only a good thing for the student if um, you you get a really low mean if the class scored a really low mean so a teacher is being nice and assuming the test was maybe a little hard and giving the top portion of the students an A even though they didn't necessarily get an A um, and that's the idea. So some schools actually grade kind of competitively where everything is on a curve and the top you know percentage of students are going to get an A and the bottom percent are going to get an F no matter what they score. And so that makes it a competitive uh, grading system which is um, can be very difficult especially if everybody's really smart, right? <laughs> okay so that is uh, the grade problem there.